Hello everybody, it's me, Nikki, and today I'm here with uh, something I've seen before, but I just saw him read it, did it, and I was like, I need to do that. And that is reacting to one-star reviews of some of my favorite books. So this will be fun. I've picked one, two, three, four, five books. Um, so, you know, I can continue this if I have a lot of fun. Okay, and I'll only read like three-ish reviews. So the first book is um, The Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide by Douglas Adams, Complete and Unabridged. It has all of the books and a short story. Okay, let's do this. Filters, one star. Um, and if you don't know, Hitchhiker's Guide is about poor, poor Arthur Dent, whose house is about to get bulldozed to make way for a highway and then Earth blows up to make way for a space highway, so he can't catch a break. Uh, but he's with Ford Prefect, which I have read as perfect for a long time. Apparently it's a car. I don't know that. Um, and then it just continues his event adventures in space and then not space. So... Um, the first one is least, their least enjoyed book of that year, which was 2015. Um, the science fiction had some interesting details. Those details often went off on tangents, leaving me confused and constantly wondering what was going on. The author's delivery, in my opinion, was pretty poorly done. Everything was in a jumble, and I would have appreciated the information given more if it was delivered in a simple, composed way. It seemed as though the book did not stay on one event or character for a while except in the beginning. Overall, I would not recommend this book to anyone looking for a quick read or science fiction. Okay. It is a science fiction book. But it is also a humorous book. Those details and tangents are what make it funny. And the, everything was in a jumble because that's the point. <laughs> Douglas Adams was part of Monty Python. Like he was friends with them. Um, he might have even worked on some of the things. Um, yeah, he co-wrote with Monty Python, and he, so, like, that's his humor. Okay. Okay. So. Yes. Um... The next one is, the majority of people who rated this five stars only read the first book. After the first book, the wheels come off. Mm, no judgments. Uh, it so needs an editor. The author just had random ideas about where to put the characters and stick them there with bad dialogue and confused ideas about what to do with them. There are several scenes in the book with potential, but they were destroyed by confusion and dry British humor. Our main character, Arthur, seems okay that Earth has been destroyed. Never once do we really deal with his thoughts or feelings about what happened. All the characters, for that matter, are one-dimensional and get annoying after several hundred pages. It's confusing. It's so hard to keep track of what is, was really going on as the books came and went. It just added to the sheer frustration. Read one book and then stop. There is no reason to continue. Okay, so if you don't like dry British humor, this is not for you, because this is like 
the epitome of dry British humor. The scenes are what they are. <laughs> I can't explain that to you any better. Like, they're supposed to be dry British. And uh, I think the characters are supposed to be one-dimensional. I feel like they are. And I think Arthur's never supposed to... You're not really supposed to get into their heads because they are flat and one-dimensional. But, you know... And it's not, I guess it is confusing, which is why I would read all of the books at once. But, okay. I would reread this. I did that in my tag video. I would reread this. Um, it's just like, if you don't like the humor, this book is not going to land with you. Like, it is a sci-fi book because it's set in space and it has like time travel and aliens, but it's not a sci-fi book, really. It's like, I don't even, it's an, a, somebody says it's an absurd book. That's the point. Like, you know. And then somebody says, I read two stories, ridiculously silly. I could not see a point. There isn't one really. It's just, they're just, I don't know how to explain it. If you don't like them, you're not going to get them and like them. I can't explain it. Like, I can't. I'm sorry. Somebody else could, is probably does a way better job than me, but the humor is what makes the books. Like, and they're so quotable. 42. That's the answer, but nobody knows the question. You know? Dolphins, fuck off. So long and thanks for all the fish. You know, they're like smarter than us. They don't want to deal with... Sp the Vorg Vogons? I think it's Vogons. Poetry is horrendously awful. Uh, Marvin, the robot. The, the paranoid android. He's a robot that's supposed to be nice, but he's depressed. You know? <sighs> it's just... That's just how it's supposed to work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you didn't like it and didn't understand it, but they're very good. You should read them. Um, next is Wonder Woman Warbringer by Leigh Bardugo. Um, this is part of the DC Icons series, which uh, has Batman, Catwoman, uh, Superman, and Black Canary. That is a new one. Um, and they're all about, like, well, I'm not sure about the others. Uh, this one is about Diana before she became Wonder Woman. Um... And what happens is that, oh, I've never had to say this out loud. Aaliyah is a warbringer, a direct descendant of Helen of Troy, fated to bring about an age of bloodshed and misery. So together, they go out into the world to fix stuff, to fix it. And, you know, it's when she learned, Diana learns to be... Diana, basically. It was very good. I quite enjoyed it. Now let's see what our one stars thought. Okay. The first one is a DNF uh, at page 280. Um... First of all, they're not a fan of superheroes. Uh, they like wizards and witches and magical creatures, but they quite enjoyed the movie, so they thought they would like the book. Um, she, This person also did not like Six of Crows. Well, she finished, they finished it. She finished it. They finished it. I'll call them they. Um, but they didn't 
really like it, so sh they might just not like Bardugo. Um, they read the book in 18, for 18 days and didn't finish it. Um, she, they thought the plot was boring and they couldn't connect with it. Um, um, let's see. The book made her fall asleep and they believed that Diana was boring. Um, and they liked a side character, but not Diana or the uh, Alia. Um, so, I mean, I didn't find it boring because I know Wonder Woman beyond the movie so like if that's your first batch of Wonder Woman I don't know if that this book is for you because that movie gave her lots of like flaws you know she thought Ares was one person and it wasn't and she thought once Ares was dead the war would stop and it didn't and she didn't understand why generals wouldn't go out and fight their own battles. Um, but in the comics, because it's not, like, the, the movie is a breaking into point. There's a word for that. It's lost me. But the comics, she's established. Yeah, they change it around, but she's established. So... She still has her flaws, but not really. You know, not as flawed as, like, Batman or Iron Man or, I don't know, uh, who's somebody else? Green Lanterns, you know, that type of thing. And, and sh in this book, she's young, it's YA, so maybe, like, 15 or 16? I don't know if they gave a real age. So, she's not really Diana that we all know and love, you know, she's just sort of coming into herself type of thing. Um, and a, a lot of side characters are really good, and Aaliyah, she was fine too. I mean, I didn't read the book for her, but, you know, yeah. I did not explain that very well. I apologize. Um, next, uh, they said it was a waste of their time and a complete and utter joke. There will be spoilers uh, that I will not. Um, be doing. Uh, uh, dialogue is awkward and clunky. And the plot has no flowing narratives. Um, super Soup, soup, oh God, superfluous, superfluous. Thank you. I got it there. Characters. Um, Diana is bland. There's no confusion or bewilderment or any of that. Vanilla automaton. Uh, her new friend is the AKA generic feisty bestie. Uh, who is the catalyst, but whose story t overtakes the entire plot of the book. Uh, side t cheesy teen love story. Um, <clears throat> it says there's no coming of age story. Um, it's a uh, whole Greek mythological history to Aaliyah's blood. Um, do, 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 do. It's an origin story. So let's put that focus on beginning for Wonder Woman. S choose Either choose Diana's voice or Aaliyah. Um, and then... 
that's a spoiler. Uh, it was cringeworthy and depressingly cliched. Just read like a million other books. There's nothing uh, that makes it stand out. Okay. It is an origin story. And, okay. Okay. <clears throat> but it's not like, it's not even like an origin story because you don't see her like being birthed or any of that. And, um, it's her, I guess it's her origin story at becoming a superhero and it's not overshadowed in my opinion because Diana and Aaliyah like Diana brings Aaliyah to her island and then their mascara starts getting fucked up so she takes her off the island to where she can be with her friends and family and then stuff happens there and Diana has to decide how to deal with that stuff. You know, and she does learn about whatever's happening on Earth at the time. And then when she goes back, she's a little wiser. That's the whole point of Diana to me is that she does stuff and she becomes a little wiser. So next time she does stuff, she knows what to do and what not to do. So that's just my opinion on that. Um, it's not as uh, Greek, like in Greek um, mythologies, there is like, uh, what that guy, what's that guy? He said, he's found out from the Oracle that his grandson was gonna kill him. So he made sure his daughter was locked up, but then she got pregnant by Zeus and then he got rid of them and then his grandson killed him. It, there wasn't that type of thing, but, you know, Diana did learn something, and then by the time Steve comes around, she'll be ready to go and take care of Earth. That's just me. Um, and then the next one is, they're going to pretend this book never happened. There's only so much a disappointment a girl can take. The hell okay it wasn't like the best book in the entire world but what book is and quite frankly it was fun I had fun with it and again maybe it's because I know Wonder Woman and I have just deep dived into everything about her I don't know. I'm biased, probably. That's why it's my fave. <sighs> okay, next we have Crooked Kingdom, which is the second of the Six of Crows duology. And yes, I like this one better than the first one because of how everything like gets fucked up in the first one and then just stuff happens and I love the stuff and you're like oh my god okay so the first one is one and a half stars they tried it they really did but Bordugo's storytelling does nothing to me this is such an overrated book together with six of crows okay the six of crows is like a heist but then this is like after the heist when stuff has gone wrong which doesn't always happen in heist novels and then it's like Kaz is like we're gonna do this and then this is gonna happen and then this and then this and then somewhere along that line something goes wrong but in the end it still happens and Kaz still has it all planned out and I just which means that Leigh Bardugo had it all planned out and I don't like I'm a writer. I, oh god, Ugh. that pre-planning is epic. Um, so I just love that kind of stuff. I'm sorry. I'm so emotional right now. Um, 
The next one is a one star, straight up for the ending only. Oh, they're mad because their favorite character died. I'm part of their favorite couple. Uh, they wanted somebody else to die. Um, and they're sad about that. Which, I mean, yeah, but that's not really a reason to give a book one star just for the ending. So... And the next one, oh, it's a good thing I'm only doing three because there's one that's not in English. Uh, what is, is that Russian? Don't quote me. Um, anyway, the next one is, uh, they were pretty conflicted about the first book. Uh, but I'd seen some people mention liking the second one better, so they decided to give it a shot. Um, to be honest, I'm not even sure Bardugo knew what the plot was supposed to be. I think she did. Mm -hmm. We'll just wait till we're done. Uh, going into Crooked Kingdom, I thought the plot would be centered mostly about rescuing Inej. Oops, spoilers. Uh, with a little bit of get our money on the side. I wasn't sure how it was supposed to fill over 500 pages, but I figured surely something more would pop up. Well, folks, it never did. About 250, Inej comes back, and they really started struggling to finish the book. There was never any motivation to keep going other than getting the money, and the longer that took, the less I cared. In her attempt to drag this out, Bardugo added so much crap that served no purpose, and then never bothered to do anything with it. Uh, and then some spoilers. Uh, the climax made little sense to me as a reader because half of it came out of left field and half of it directly contradicted what we'd been told. Ah, yes, Kaz had the true plan from even the reader. How genius. No, actually, it was very annoying to be suddenly be left completely out of the plan and be as clueless as the general public. We were told the basic plan and then once it was in motion, it was clear everyone else knew the true plan but the reader missed that little meeting. In the end, it made it seem like a bad Scooby-Doo villain reveal about those meddling kids while well, the gang congratulated themselves on their brilliance. It wasn't brilliant, it was convenient and stupidly easy. Okay, so first of all, it's not just about getting the money back. It's also about making sure that the people who fucked them over get destroyed. Because that is part of Kaz's plan. It has been from the very beginning. So, and I don't mind not knowing everything. I don't want to be told everything. Like, if I'd have known what the true plan was, it wouldn't have been as, oh my god, I can't believe that happened. So, like, it's written that way for a reason. Authors do not have to tell the reader everything. Just so you know. I'm going to actually talk about that in a different video. So look forward to that. <sighs> My voice. I haven't talked this much in a long time. Next is the um, collected poems of Emily Dickinson. I don't know if you know this. Probably not since I don't know if I've ever talked about it. I love Emily Dickinson. She is like her and Edgar Allan Poe are like the authors I love the most uh, out of everybody. So there's not a lot of one stars, or at least not a lot of one stars with um, words, reviews. So the first one is in an effort to test the flexibility of my mind, I picked up this collection. What followed was the equivalent of tearing a hamstring. 
From this experience, I've learned that when performing new activities, one should acclimate gradually and smartly or suffer injury, including an outright aversion to poetry. But alas, the hamstring is torn and gentle rehabilitation may restore it to its former glory and potential. Suggested rehab for a poetry simpleton. Does Dr. Seuss qualify? Okay. Poetry, yeah, especially for dead people, and especially for Emily Dickinson, is uh, subjective. Like, what the author, I know this because I write poetry, what the author writes is like coming from their heart and their head, and it means something, but what you read, it means something different. So that's why I took poetry classes. I never really liked discussing it, you know, because like it means something, especially because Emily Dickinson was the 1800s, especially because her sister burned a lot of her love letters to her girlfriend. So... Um, the next one is, I didn't really enjoy reading through this book of poems. I felt that most of the time I had no idea what I was reading. I will acknowledge that I haven't read much poetry and didn't really take time to meditate and ponder on them. Maybe in the future, when I become more familiar with poetry and I take the time to read them slowly, I will enjoy them more. I don't think you have to meditate and ponder on poetry. I mean, you can, but I think... Poetry can be, because it's small, it should be small, it can be ingested quickly and then moved on and then later you can go back and like really focus on a poem. That's my opinion. So, and then the next one is, I read it because it was on my reading list of a lifetime. Sing song, rhyming, there was a couple that I liked but mostly just boring. I'm not sure how you can say it's boring because there's a poem about dying for beauty. Um, you know, she talks about death. So that's not boring. That's what she lived with. I mean, like, uh, I don't know. I just love her. The brain is wider than the sky. I mean, that just tells you everything you need to know. And you know, when you're feeling bad, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand how you can think this is boring. I'm going to add that to my list right now of work to do for booktube. Love Emily Dickinson. And finally, we have The Curse of Shalian by Lois McMaster Bujold. This is one of my favorites, and I like read it in 2020. It was so good. And of course, uh, the sequel as well. Sequel Paladin of Souls is also as amazing. So let's see what these ones are. Oh, the first one again is a DNF at 42%. Um, they were trying to listen to this and they were trying to push it to the end because it's a book I picked up for a challenge. They can't finish it. I'm so grossed out by a 35 year old guy character having inappropriate thoughts about 19 year olds and 70 year olds. Se 19 and 17 year olds and a 40 year old saying he'll rape the 16 year old if she doesn't obey him. If you haven't figured it out, I really don't approve of this. I feel sick after reading it. We'll come back to that. Besides the mentions, the story is dry. Not many things happen, but there are so many descriptions and things. There may be too many characters, or they simply didn't pay attention because it didn't pull me in. Why the majority is giving four to five is incomprehensible to me, but to each his own. Okay. First, it's set in a medieval world so that happened 35 or older married 17 or younger so and like the 35 year old he took him a while to like even admit to having feelings 
And then they were sweet about it. Another 40-year-old raping the 16-year-old. But he's an evil man. <laughs> like, he's an asshole. He's clearly the asshole of the book. Um, as for the story, in the beginning, there's not a lot of action. But once the thing happens, to me, it just picked up. But you know what? Like it says, to each their own. Um, next one. They also DNF'd. They read seven chapters, but the author focused enough on the 34-year-old being aroused by the 16 and 19-year-old. He had, they had to put it down. If that's something that squicks you, avoid this book. Again, it's not, it's mentioned because he's been in a prison ship, a uh, slave, and they are pretty young girls purposefully flirting with him because he is a vaguely handsome man who is nice and smart and saves their lives. Um, so, but that's not the point of the book. Like, it's not a romance. It's there. But it is an action-adventure story with gods who are amazing. Gosh. And again, there's, and the next one started off so interesting, like an ex-lord Edmond Dantes and Jean Valjean. Valjean? Valjean. Hybrid escaping from enslavement to restart his life. A character who needs to refine himself. A man of... A mystery of a man killed by magic. I should have loved it, but I couldn't finish it. We're supposed to root for a grown man, lust after his two sixteen his two students after he teaches them to swim. He attaches uh his love to one of the girls who's nineteen, the gross, not exaggerating, she's not given anything else, maybe that she and the princess like to get into trouble. Uh, yeah, they just didn't like it because of that. The guy, though, his inability to restrain himself around his swim is it was, uh, Mr. Super Special, always right, gather around everyone. This book works to portray him as a courtly man fallen from grace. Uh, well, I could not see why any of the characters cared about any other characters to, enough to defend or sacrifice. Then I just stopped caring. It's not their cup of tea. What? Again. Again. I know it's there. And it is a point that it is a returning health. Because he's been beaten and starved. But he doesn't do it. Like, nothing ever happens until, like, the end when he kisses uh, Beatrice. And even then, he's like, oh, I gotta go help the king and queen. We'll get married. It's fine. Like, that's not literally, I don't even remember that. That's how much I glossed over it as not being important. How is that what you focus on when there's amazing world building? And they also don't like that they portray him as a courtly fallen man, yet is often spoken to and listened to like there's no change in his station. And even if there was... Why would a king who'd never met him before want to know his opinion? Because there is a change in his station, and he talks to the gods, and it's a thing, and you didn't read the book, so you don't know. <sighs> now I'm mad. Like, that's what you're going to focus on? Looks like everybody DNF'd it. Because of that. I mean, that's the story. Okay, that's your choice, but whatever. Ugh. I'm gonna have to do this again, because I'm very fucking salty now, so. Oh no, my lipstick got all over the place, because I got so angry. Where is it? Oh no. Oh well. I got so angry, my lipstick got messed up. Damn you, one star reviews. Well, anyway. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're not bothered by that. I know I'm going to be. So I'm going to take care of it when this is over. And I will see you in the next video. Oh, and I hope you're having a lovely day. Goodbye!